everyone and welcome. This is Baroniville episode 14th recorded on July 23rd, 2011. I am your host, Apple Cider. Uh, great to have everybody listening in and great to have uh, all of our guests and also great to have my co-host as well. Hello there, Chef Sandy. Hello, hello. So good to see everybody here. Of course, I can't see you because this is a podcast, so that's a little bit dumb, but... Uh, going to say it's the magic of imagination imagination yep so um very cool um we have some meat news and a bunch of fun stuff uh we got your fix we've got emails we've got topics we've got cool things but first we need to introduce our guests coming in from the website derpyhooves.com uh, our first main contender that we have rounding in and with a uh, with a gray coat and uh, looks like from the icon a top hat as well. Uh, we have Derpy Squad. Thank you for having me. Cool deal, man. Nice to have you on. Uh, uh, <laughs> in the other corner, uh, facing off against Derpy tonight is going to be uh, Plaster. Hello, how you doing? Doing fine. So you both are going to have to fight to the death, and uh, one of you is going to come out alive. Okay. The winner oh. gets muffins. All right. Um, I think Plaster's younger than me, so he could probably kick my ass. Yay. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out on our own time. <laughs> you didn't, re- you didn't realize it was going to come down to this. <laughs> Every single show, we pit friends against each other. I just booked the Battle Dome. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we I just re- got my wheelchair fixed. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Battle Dome only rents by the hour, and we'll have 45 minutes left. We got to do something with it. Oh, boy, we'll figure something out. So, very cool to have you guys on. Uh, we have our usual four questions. Uh, first off, you guys, uh, I should probably do this with uh, with individuals who have their own little websites and everything run so that we can give kind of a lowdown. But uh, one of you guys want to kind of explain what uh, derpyhooves.com is? I'll let the guy who actually owns the site take care of that one, unless... Oh, great. (laughs) Uh Aha, responsibility. Um, If you want... Yeah, I guess, I mean, it would be me, even though I would say plaster. I guess you could say Derpy Hooves is an alternative news site to Equestria Daily. Is basically what's going to go around. It's one of the older sites in the fandom. I think plaster and I have looked, and it's almost one of the first ones. But we post about... Pony news, stuff about the shows, interviews. We try, we do um, a good thing with the PMVs. You know, look around, get the videos. Um, plaster. Uh, yeah, right now. Uh, while before I started, I mean, obviously we have jobs to do, and we couldn't couldn't uh, f- focus on the site all that much. But we're working on it, and we're getting better, and we're getting more news out there faster and stuff like that. But before then, people were actually using it as a link hub because of all the fancy little links on the side there. It goes like all the way down the page, which is very convenient for quite a few people who are just looking for things. So, I mean, but right now we're definitely gearing up for for a uh, a rebirth, I suppose you could say. Yeah, and the uh, the site itself has some kind of neat stuff because I the first time I came across it, you it was because of uh, the fact that you guys actually do have the episodes there. You can click and just find all the episodes, find links to high def, and everything kind of listed on there. There's games, artwork, so you guys kind of have a uh, some neat little way gates to anything you could kind of need uh, just right off of derpyhooves dot com. Yeah, that was very, very popular that I've heard. Uh, that was obviously before I started because I started after the season ended. But like every Friday, the episodes were there, the links were up, and you could just watch it. Just click on it, we're good. So yep, I remember on, uh, clicking on the, finding those on Co, getting oh, yeah. links to the new stuff. <laughs> Come yep, on. So, yeah, I mean, we started on CO there, and the episode section is definitely one of the more popular sections. Looking because I look at all the stats and what people are looking at. Yeah, I'm just sitting there going, going. All right, 720p, 720p. Somebody post it. Somebody post it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on. So, yeah, the very- Friday night thing was one of our more popular things too. Yeah, I used to sit here every afternoon, watch CO, watch 
basically anywhere. Try to get the live streams posted as soon as possible. And then actually, I because I work for me slow in the winter, so it gives me a lot of free time. I used to sit around in the chat room and wait for like Pencil Pony to post the video. That's very cool. Um, so let's do this. Um, we, we can kind of jump in and uh, figure out everything with the um, with uh, just talk about how running a new site and how uh, everything is with that. Um, kind of getting that all settled. But uh, first, let's move on. We've got emails that we should cover. Uh, we've already set a determined order for once, so there's no uh, there's no discussing order. Even though I kind of referenced it there myself. Oh wait, I'm forgetting something. All right, so we got you guys. So we got our four questions that we have to uh, to ask you on this. Uh, very important things that we always must uh, do to kind of know the background. So we'll start with you, Dirt, because you're first here on the list. So first two, favorite episode and favorite character. Um, I mean, favorite episode, I found it to be, thinking about it, being a toss-up between 23 and 25, the Cutie Mark Chronicles or Party of One. But I'm going to have to go with Party of One just for the insanity scene from Pinky, which is probably being a little too popular. But there, that's just, I mean, classic comedy right there, mm -hmm. at least in my mind. Favorite character, I mean, obviously, I got to say Derp Behooves. But from the main six, again, it's going to be Pinkie Pie, more for the insanity than her hyperactive personality. Very cool. Um, yeah, that, we've, we've got some fun questions uh, a little bit l later regarding the main six that we can follow, but uh, I, I do ha kind of have to agree with uh, Pinky there. So let's go with the other two. Why do you love the show and the reaction from those around you? Why do I love the show? Um, it's, I think, a nostalgia for me because I'm a child of the 80s. We used to have Disney Afternoon, which I'm sure a lot of people remember. Yeah. You know, it was Goof Troop, DuckTales. Oh, yeah. And the Darkwing show Duck. just, <laughs> yep, Darkwing Duck, it just, it reminds me of those shows. And, of course, I mean, it's a great show. And those around and you? Then, yep. Um, nobody around me really knows. Most of them, my friends in the area, I live in a yeah. whole part of New York, basically, woods, mountains, banjos. The, you know, the, the, most the, of my friends took golf. Uh, it's very, off, so. it's very weird when the mountains and trees start playing banjos. You know you're really in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, the most redneck area you could think of. Very. But most of my friends have disappeared, so I don't flaunt it, nor do I hide it from anyone. All right. Very just, cool. They don't. Uh, all right. Well, let's, let's move on. Hey, Plaster, what are your uh, favorite episode and favorite character? You're going to surprise me with this character I can already see. Oh, yes. Uh, my favorite episode is definitely Party of One. Uh, I don't think I have laughed that hard at a Pony episode. Uh, and I, I just thought it was an amazing episode in general. I just having Pinky break down like that was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, no, it, it's definitely uh, up there on the top. It was actually difficult for me to choose that one. Uh, all the episodes are fantastic. Uh, but I'm going to move on. Favorite yeah, character. go for it. Uh, Octavia, actually. Uh, first, like, I don't know if it's the coloring. Uh, well, I played an orchestra for like seven years, so that helps as well. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it might be just the, the hairstyle and the coloring. It, it's, it's, I, I, you are not the first person to go like, oh, I really love Octavia. It's just like, it's just a background character that's there that, you know, has, that has a certain, you know, a certain unusual look and it just it's, it's just so funny that some of these background characters become as popular where people are like yeah I love that character that one's great there's quite a bit of fan art for all of these background ponies and it baffles me it's just I, I'm, I love it though it's fantastic I'm mm -hmm. okay with this it's, it's, it's one of the great things about the fandom is we've taken all these background characters I mean created basically their own universes of personality the the question will be how they will all uh, stack up when season two comes, and they're like, no, 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 Luna totally doesn't act like that. No, oh, 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 oh that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how Luna acts in season two, nobody's gonna be happy. Yeah, just, Luna's just gonna show up. She's gonna kick through a uh, kick the door and then just go. Ah! You know, and everybody's gonna be like, Christ <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> no, this what I. This wasn't what I wanted at all. 
Oh man, <laughs> just I like Blue and Octo. She's so she was so nice, <laughs> such a nice pony, such a, so nice until she went crazy. All right, and um, the other two. Why do you love it? And the reaction from those around you. Uh, the character reactions, like not yeah, reactions, interactions with each other, like the conversations that they hold, like like you feel it. You like you can almost feel that they truly are really good friends. I mean, like just that conversation that they had in over a barrel in the train, that little conversation when like with Fluttershy being a tree, that conversation right there was like, holy crap, I could see like any little group of girls having that conversation and just it's so authentic. Also, it's cute girls doing cute things. That's, mm -hmm. Would you would you say that's uh, it's more of a testament to the writing or the voice acting? There's there's I, there, there's a question for you. Oh yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, well, obviously, it has something to do with the voice actors because they make it believable. But I th obviously think that the writing behind that helps as well. Mm -hmm. All right, and those around you, how do, what do they think about your poniness? <laughs> like I give a f yeah. oh, like a boss. Yeah, no, I've actually converted quite a few people uh, in my friend group, and I've talked to them. Actually, I just had one of my my like my best friend call me a brony over a text uh, a couple of days ago, and I had to shake my head because that was just way out of left field. So, just as planned. Uh, yeah. The conversion bureau begins. All right. Well, very cool. Nice to have you guys on. Uh, we do have tons to go through. And first to uh, to break through this is we've got to do emails. We've got tons of great fans that send us mail at bronyville at gmail.com. So uh, we've got four of those, and we're going to go through those on the show at this moment. I will start with the first one on this great email segment. This one comes from Captain L. Hey, AC and Chef Sandy. I've been following the show since episode 11. Not long, I know. And enjoying every moment of it. The rotation of guests keeps it interesting, and you always have something funny to say. I want to know if you guys have watched any of the following. Commentaries by Bronycom, commentaries by the Otaku Ascended, and the Call of the Pony videos from Oh My Gods. Um, I also have my fanfic suggestion, uh, brand new elements of gaming series, comedies, where, uh, where the cast come together to play video games. Captain L, P.S., Fluttershy forever. So, uh, have any of you guys, I've actually not checked out any of the commentaries in the Call of Ponies, so I'm the odd man out here. Somebody fell and broke themselves. Um, but, uh, do, uh, have any of you guys tried any of these? I don't have the time, unfortunately. I guess, I guess that's a lie, but uh, I, I just I saw them. I know they're there, but I just haven't been able to check them out. I've done um, Brony Coms. I haven't gone through the entire season, but I think the first five or six I've watched so far. But again, like Plaster, it's hard to find time. Come on, Chef, you got to save us. Have you watched them? Um, like Derpy, I've seen the first few of the Brony Coms, but I'd have honestly not taken the time. Oh. I mean, I've got like a massive pile of stuff in my YouTube queue from like submissions last couple days. So it's, and he didn't provide links, unfortunately. So I can't be like, Oh, I'll look at them afterwards. I'd have to go look them up. I, I think th I, I did see a few of the Bernie, uh, like maybe an episode of, and a half of a Bernie com. I, I thought they were nice. I thought they were interesting. Um, it's, it's kind of good to have after you've watched the episodes and you're going on your third run through the series to have some other people kind of there to spur you on. Cause it's like, Oh, I know all these jokes coming up. It's almost getting to the point of being able to recite an episode. So you know, it's always good to have a little bit extra there. Yeah. I, I, I think they're good. If you like them, they are good. Hold on there a second, AC. Sure. You're only on your third listen, your third watch through. Um, What's wrong uh, the, with you? The whole, uh, the whole season. I'm busy. I'm making a podcast. Don't make <laughs> fun of me. I've seen the first 12 episodes at least like eight times showing it to different people. Yeah, AC, get with the program. I'm get, I'm busy. Don't make fun of me. Get your head in the game. Oh, oh you guys. Oh, I, I, Chef, be quiet and read this next email. <laughs> I'm angry. All right. Well, there's 30 seconds of silence while I read this quietly. Now, 
Hey, CNCS. Love the job you guys are doing. As others have said before, your podcast is very professional when compared to the other brony podcasts. And it is very refreshing. I just want to say thank you and keep up the great work. Anyways, concerning your late guest from Bronyville episode 13, I too am one of those very rare Saskatchewan bronies. If you could hook me up with an email with Salty Justice, we might be able to start a meetup in one of the two decent sized cities. Help a pony out. Again, keep up the great work. Yours truly, Steady Hooves. All right, making connections. There's now two bronies in Saskatchewan. So which one of you guys wrote that email? (laughs) (laughs) I didn't write that. I don't live in Saskatchewan. I live in Texas. It's bad enough. Yeah. Uh, Though I did check, and he is absolutely true. There is only two big cities in Saskatchewan. I was like, no, there's no way to. Oh, wow. He's right. It's like the Wyoming of Canada. I was like, oh, God. I feel terrible. And they they don't even connect to, to the same roads. It's not like they directly, or at least it looked like they didn't like have a main route to each other. They just wanted to pass silently in the night. Just just keep going. Just get out yeah. of Saskatchewan. It's like there's Saskatoon and Regina, and that's it. It's like you obviously want to go to Calgary. Just get out of here. Just just keep going. It's like Calgary, Edmonton, or go to Vancouver. Right, just keep that's going. That's where all the cool guys are. Yeah, having riots and. Canuck fans. Yeah, that's where all the ponies are. Come that on. is tr- that is true. That is true. Don't hate me, Daniel Ingram. I like the, the, that's cool. Okay, Vancouver <laughs> is fun. Don't hate me, team production team. All right, I'll stop shilling. Uh, hey, Derpy, we you got the third one. So you want to light that up? The longest one. <laughs> yep. Hey, ponies. Is your body you ready? A great show, and I'm listening to the latest episode right now. And I just got to the bit where you guys talked about Hasbro announcing pony merchandise for bronies. At first, like you guys, I was pretty excited, but then I thought about it. The bronies are making amazing merchandise right now, and Hasbro hasn't chased them down yet. Why would they? They aren't losing any money at the moment, since the merch bronies aren't stealing money from the show's target audience. Hasbro don't expect the bronies to buy official merch, so letting bronies make stuff for bronies is not an issue. But as soon as Hasbro are making merch for bronies, the merch bronies are infringing on Hasbro's territory, and these are copyrighted characters and images they are using. This could easily signal a potential end to unofficial merch and the beginning of a barrage of cease and desist letters and emails. Now tell me, do you really think trust Hasbro to give you stuff as cool as the merch bronies are putting out right now? As a big as big as a variety? Because I don't. So I ask so I have to ask you guys, do you think they will begin chasing down bronies producing unofficial merchandise for sale? If so, how far will they go? I'm sorry to burst the magic bubble there, but you have to admit it is a double edged unicorn horn. Your faithful listener Addicted artist. Double-edged unicorn horns do hurt because they poke your head as well. <laughs> <laughs> ow, ow, I hate having this. It's a bladed Ow. cylinder. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's just wrong. So, um, do you do you want to jump in? Tell you what, Chef, you jump into this one and I'll, I'll, I'll do the, uh, the assist afterwards. Well, he brings up good points. Uh, Hasbro, though, has been extremely lenient towards the stuff that they don't really concern themselves. They are, first and foremost, a toy company. And is, you know, they not come after people selling customs. They've not come after people um, doing that kind of stuff. And people have been making customs forever. I mean, these are something that's been going on since G1. And I don't think that they're going to push the fans away from like the shirts or pins or jewelry type stuff or the hoodies because obviously that's not what they're going to make they might make a couple shirts um but they've already passed off like the license right to the we love fine guys and i don't see them going after anybody in particular and if they add something, I mean, I saw pictures of that MLB convention that they had out in Rhode Island, and they seem to nurture all the custom and uh, custom merchandise that people make. Like people are coming in with all their stuff, selling it. And I was watching the Facebook page, and they have pictures of guys with all their cool like custom merchandise. And 
they're embracing it. I don't really see there being much of a problem. I mean, I can understand if someone finds a pony mold somewhere and starts making them themselves with plastic, but yeah. Right. Yeah, so far. That, so that, far. that was that was my main point of it. it did look like it, you know, if if there was any point they could snuff it out and be like, no, none of this merchandise, it would be at their own convention. But they were like, eh, all right, necklaces. We don't do necklaces, so you guys can do them. So, ah, stuffed animals. Eh, ours are, uh, they, we do sell some of those, but not for that character, so I guess you're okay. You know, it, I actually halfway wish they would, because that means I could actually get one of them. And and not be a hundred and twenty five dollars dollars in the hole. Yeah, yeah. The um the the one thing I do uh, I do have to say with the Brony merchandise, I am a little curious and maybe a little bit suspicious if it will be what we are wanting and how um you know how good it will actually be because eh, you know it's uh, they are a toy company. We do know that in the past they have they have made some decisions that continue to you know uh, make us go crazy over and over and over. <laughs> Pink Celestia. So you know it's yeah. It, it's yeah. just things like that. Um, as uh, as something my uh, my lovely girlfriend here has just mentioned to me and handed a note across. Uh, Hasbro even sells the blanks for the custom ponies. So they are they are actually in the trade for that. So oh, that's right. I do see that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because I mean, these people are are still buying the merchandise from Hasbro. They're making custom ponies and making money off them, but they're still buying that toy. I mean, maybe they're just smart enough to go like, we could go after them, but would that cause enough bad will that it that it's not worth our, you know, not worth the 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 legal fees and the bad press from fans? So the backlash could probably be fatal, really. Because that's a huge, huge niche of the of the uh, fandom is the custom stuff. Yeah, and and just you know it would it would kind of put a a, a a blight on it where it's just like ah, I I could want it, but man, that company just they, they went after these guys that were making T-shirts, and now it's just not as fun and eh, you know. And it would be way too late to do that now. They yeah. would have had to start doing that in the eighties. All right. Well, uh, as I said, hoping for good brony merchandise, but it uh, doesn't look like, at least for the time being, that they're going to uh, clamp down and stop any of these people making uh, custom little things that they don't usually make. So, you know, hey, uh, hey, you know, smoke them if you got them. You know, uh, that doesn't exactly apply. Uh, hey, Plaster, read that next one. All right. Uh I loved the show. When I heard Chef Sandy, I knew it was going to be an awesome podcast. Just a quick question for you guys. If you could choose only one pony of the main six to remove from the show, who would it be and why? I would give Pinkie Pie the boot. I mean, she started the war in over a barrel because of a song. Hope you read this on the show. Phoenix Fire, a.k.a. Jetpack Jesus. P.S. Applejack is the best pony. Uh... Yeah, no, I wouldn't give Pinkie Pie the boot because she's definitely, I think, the best of the main six. So, mm -hmm. all right, so Plaster, you've you started talking. Who who goes? Oh, hmm. oh here uh -oh. here's the thinking. Uh oh, wheels are turning. Okay, I'll go. I'll go. Or tell you what, Chef, do you know? Do you have your idea who's going first? See, now this is going to be a uh, complete opposite of uh, Phoenix's here, because I would probably have to give Applejack the boot. Aww. She is a uh, purely reactive character and uh, doesn't have much personality beyond clashing with other ponies. That is that is, that is absolutely terrible, Chef Sandy. I, I, I absolutely <laughs> find it deplorable, and I am choosing Applejack as well. Uh <laughs> It is, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I went like, okay, Twilight, she, she's the narrator. We got to keep her. Pinky adds that crazy aspect, which is fun. Uh, Rainbow Dash is the tomboy. Got to keep that. Uh, Rarity's the girly girl. Got to keep that. And Fluttershy is, you know, the super cute, quiet girl, which leaves, oh, crap, Applejack. So, or Twilight. Yeah. yeah. All I got to say is I hope that there is a Applejack focused episode in season two to redeem the character and make mm -hmm. her a bit more rounded so your your feelings derpy i'm not really sure i want to pick on poor twilight i uh, i kind of had that feeling for twilight for a while too she is she is just kind of like the narrator and just going like eh, you know yeah and it's but the thing is you remove that you kind of remove the whole point of the show yeah yep so plaster you figured out yours 
Yes, I have. I would get rid of Rainbow Dash. Oh. <gasps> oh. Oh, oh, you heard it. Oh, burn. Oh. Sick burn. Oh, oh my God. Bad press. I'm sorry. Show's over. This, this is too much. <laughs> Well, if I have to hear 20% cooler outside of the show again, I might kill someone. That is getting a little old. <laughs> that is getting a might bit old, so I kind of have to agree. Uh, <laughs> so maybe, wow, okay, that was contentious. <laughs> uh, I just saw a thousand people pick up their headsets and drop them in unison. <laughs> a sense of disturbance in the force. Ah. Uh. So uh, very cool. Uh, thanks, everyone, for those emails. Uh, super cool. Always great to have you send those in. And uh, you can send those to Bronyville at gmail.com. Uh, and uh, let's move on to news and news time, bronies. Uh, and you know what? Chef helped a lot out on this a lot, so I'm going to have him direct us a little bit. Um, t- let's do, let's tell you what, let's do that second one first, because I think that one is uh, a little bit more pertinent to us. Yes, indeed. So, a few episodes ago, the ever-wonderful Purple Tinker challenged AC and I to start up our own uh, meetup.com groups. And the first meet for the North Texas Bronies happened last night at main event. And it was massive. About 62 people, you know. There's that approximate, there's like a half person maybe somewhere floating around there, but there were 62 people at this meet. I, I arrived at like 5.10 because it was so at 6, and there's already three people there. Before 6 o'clock, we already had to like 25, and then people just kept showing up. One of the guys came and went to Target across the street and got some name tags, a 50-pack. We ran out, and there were still a dozen people that didn't have name tags. Uh, we took over the billiards. Uh, we took over six lines of bowling. We had enough people to fill both teams on laser tag. And the mini golf course could not stand with, stand up against our might. Um, and it was still going about midnight too. Went from about 6 p.m. to midnight. And then after that, I mean, I had to leave because I was super tired. But there was still a huge contingent going to go invade an IHOP. And I pity those poor, poor employees of IHOP <laughs> that had a sudden swarm of ponies descend upon them at, you know, 1 a.m. But all in all, it was extremely fun. I am really happy that it went off so well. They were extremely accommodating at this particular main event. Uh, got massive props to Jay Hoof for... Uh, coordinating on the Facebook side of things. I got them. I mean, uh, it went off about as good as anybody could have expected. And it was really good. We had, we had people from freaking Houston drive up, you know, 400 miles to come to this meet. There was some people from uh, Austin, I think, too. Oh, I've driven across Texas. That is definitely quite the haul. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, people really put their stock in the meat and I can only hope that they had as much fun as I did and the reaction from the people that we've seen so far is that they did so it was fantastic and we'll be doing another meet like that probably here in another month or so before the end of the uh, summer fun special well super cool fun on that uh, I am turbo jelly um, I am <laughs> I'm getting towards peanut butter uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to obviously because you know I, I, I was I was taking this at, and just like oh, okay all right Chef Sandy he's got his he's got his thing in Texas I've got the Bay Area obviously mine's much uh, I wouldn't say better but uh, it's it's much uh, you know I, I, it's, yep. there's there's just more here and obviously he's brought the heat so uh, it's obviously up to our uh, our side to. Shoot the uh, next volley for our upcoming barbecue meat and meat, or ah, or more more barbecue, and then obviously oh we gotta we gotta plan some other stuff. So, hey, you Man, should oh. check out both of our meetups. Speaking of meetups, uh, I'm gonna be going to Oticon in Baltimore uh, th- next this week. Actually, I'm leaving on Thursday. Uh, uh, Strawberry Spice from Equestria Gaming, he is hosting a meetup at the con, and I will be there. Very cool. Cool, cool. Everybody's making connections. All we need is Derpy to start hanging out with people up in his weird mountain lodge where trees play banjo- banjos. 
They're flutter <laughs> trees. They're flutter trees. It's not a lodge. It's just all farmland up here in northern New York. Hmm. Farmland and Canadians. Ah, it's God, not. Canadians. Wait, no, Can- Canadians are okay. I forgot. Canadia is okay. <laughs> uh, uh, v- Vancouverans may be Canadians, so I have to be nice to them. God oh, well, Canadia. this this is the East Coasters, the Quebecans and the Ontario. Ah, ah, Habs. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'll move. Uh, we'll move past on that. Very cool about that meetup, uh, you know. And as said, check out both of uh, Chef Sandy and my meetup um, at meetup dot com, and look for any others there on your perspective uh, on your you know on your search for making some pony fans. Uh, Chef, what's that uh, website that's Purple Tankers? I'm I'm blacking out here. You know, I think it's bronies dot com. There you go. Actually. That works. Plaster I was just there. Uh, Purple Tinker wants me to take charge of the Green Bay area, and I'm just too busy to do it. So, My girlfriend is celebrating because you said Green Bay, because for some reason that is her football team. I don't... It's yep. everybody's football team. Yeah. It's the best one. That's the only option. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not going to descend into football talk on this show, Daggett. Football! <laughs> uh, football ponies. All right. Hockey. No! Ah, uh, we're destroying our show. All right, let's let's manly, move it. Manly, manly. We're doing a show, honey. Ah, I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, let's let's move this. Uh, chef, tell me about this drinking game. Okay, so this is obviously for the more adult ponies in the audience, which oh. is most of us. Uh-huh. Somebody has devised a My Little Pony drinking game. Not Which first. is obviously not the first, but <laughs> it got posted on Equestria Daily, and hey, it's a drinking game. Whenever Rainbow Dash sets those words as cool or awesome or Wonderbolts, whenever unicorns <laughs> use magic, when Trixie refers to herself as Trixie. So if you decide to watch oh, Ghostbusters, that, you are going to die. 23. There's 23 times she says that. I've counted. Uh, Pinkie Pie throws a party whenever Fluttershy says a famous Fluttershy quote, so whenever she talks. Yay. Uh, we're already flicking her hair. Twilight says, Dear Princess Celestia, One per Terra episode. Sprite is viewed multiplying. I gotta say that if you watch uh, Form of the Century, <laughs> then you're gonna die too. So apparently this is a drinking game that was made by somebody who wants us all to die. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever the words friend or friendship, et cetera, are said, it should add or shows up on the screen. You know? uh, I actually had a, made my own drinking game while well, because I'm Wisconsin and it's like a little Germany over here. So if you don't drink, you're stupid. <laughs> That's basically how it is. But yeah, no, I got to I, I have to add on my rolled rolls. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to hijack this. Uh, Do it. You, Go drink for it. To, you drink on every time Applejack says sugar cube. Yeah, of course. That obviously, said. great. That, that was said. Oh well, well it that? comes up as the fourth one listed there. Look uh, at that. I, Maybe just, somebody stole my rules. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, is this the one that was back round in December? Yes, actually. Uh, I remember I just, that. I, I just had to Google search it. Uh, <laughs> It's on the Elements of Harmony forum that was around in like November. Well, if you can find uh, those, to, uh, post them in the show. We can uh, we can append them with an additional uh, drinking game rules. They're actually, to be quite honest, I um, think I could easily them. have them on Derby Who. So um, I do have uh, somewhere the old old news reels, which I know I did post that up. Well, we can we can um, add additional ones. I I propose uh, whenever Pinkie Pie starts singing. That's obvious. That one actually is one of my rules. Uh, then there's another one for whenever a male pony speaks, like you take four shots for that. <laughs> Whoa. Like four drinks. And then whenever Pinky breaks out in song, take free three for this. And another one is whenever Applejack says something super, super cliche, like, get along, little doggy, yee-haw, or land sakes. And that's a, that's a shot. Thing. Yeah, that, that's obviously necessary. But, yeah, no, I think that's uh, that actually covers it. I yeah. thought my rules were better, but they had it covered. Anytime Fluttershy looks sheepishly at someone or something, duh. Yeah, you would die at that one, too. I know. All right. Well, that's very cool. If you want to get intoxicated, uh, we are going to be your, or, you know, somebody is going to be your enablers. Uh, they also have a list here. Somebody made a uh, a Rainbow Dash drink. Uh, Rainbow Dash double shots. Looks like it is uh, full of uh, vodka liquor. and jello. Woo. Sounds exciting. Interesting. Yep, it looks that, nice. That is alcohol, and it is uh, pretty. 
That's I mean, since good. when has anybody really needed an excuse to drink? I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, 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 don't drink, kids. Okay. <laughs> Stay in school. There you go. Don't do drugs. Drink your milk. Okay, uh, moving on. This this one's a, a pretty fun one. So uh, the big thing going on this week and this weekend was San Diego Comic Con. Woo! Lots of fun craziness going on down there. Everything from custom little crazy ponies, Hasbro having their own thing. There was a poster. Uh, there's so much. So uh, let, let, I guess we should probably break down a little bit of what happened there, uh, besides there being an enormous, like, what is that, four-foot-tall Pinkie Pie? That looks about like that, yeah. I, I love the picture with the zombie behind the dude. It just looks very ticked off at the entire picture. It's like, but yeah. There's there's, there's always that famous one with Seth Green sitting there with it. Yeah, it's yeah. like, this is, he loves Pinkie Pie. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, Comic-Con, big deal. I mean, it's kind of funny, though. I imagine that the vast majority of Bronies did not care one whit about that con until, oh, my God, that poster. Yes. Oh, the uh, cast poster super that jelly. made everybody go crazy about, oh, my God, I must have that poster. I need that poster, and it's got everybody in it. And, oh, God, look, oh, look, there's the background character. And who's in the blimp? Oh, God, who's in the balloon? Who is in the balloon? For a while there, I could feel the jelly resonating from the walls. But uh, my friend uh, actually picked me up one of those posters. So, yeah. all as well. <laughs> it's not as big as I thought it would be. It looks like it's about 11 by 17, judging by the photo that's up on Equestria Daily. Because the guy's thumb was about the same size as mine would be. Same yeah, no, it distance. Looked, it looked pretty small. I have, it looked like some would be like a insert in a magazine. That's yeah. kind of... But then again, I know some people that if I get a high quality scan of it, I can uh, get it much, pretty much larger. Yeah. Uh, actually, someone there was actually someone who was working on vectorizing it, and they're yeah. going to print it out and make like a like a ten like a foot proper big, two by three or whatever. Yeah, get a billboard yeah. sized version of it. Yeah, put it in a that'd living cool. room. That would be cool. I'd pay money to see that. <laughs> yep. I want you to paint my room to look like this. Uh, okay. <laughs> I got a, uh, but I had a couple of people that I knew that were out there, and they picked me up both the posters. And for some reason, they picked up the uh, Hot Topic Collision Custom that you can see in the first photo. It's this pink G1 style pony that's all gothed up for some reason. I love it. It's crazy. It's crazy. I like the comment. It's like it looks like she ran into a Hot Topic and hit everything. But hey, you know. People, the other people collect the G1. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. That, then that, there was some, even some cosplayers, so that's cool. Cosplayers. I love that Brony t-shirt. I love that Brony t-shirt. That, that's one of the few I would be like, yeah, okay, all right, let's do this. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, here, here, take my money. There's looks like there's even a Derpy Hooves guy. Pretty sure it's a dude. I'm going to feel bad if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> the Great Pegasus. Uh, it's on Equestria Daily. They had a post that's sort of an yeah. aggregator of the Comic Con stuff. It's the yeah. group photo. Uh, group photo. Oh yeah, that is a male derby. Yeah, like male to me. And a male yeah. Applejack with his Mott's apple juice. And then the guy with the interesting beret and rainbow dash. Yes, the stilts. That's actually pretty neat. I guess. I mean, I I got to get used to this for <laughs> this this weekend. But uh, actually, that Fluttershy is pretty cute. That's a solid seven. <laughs> Fluttershy, a solid seven. Okay, I gotta go relook at that. Wait on, uh, come on. So, yeah, if you want to check out all these pictures, um, there you can find them. You can use our link in the show notes at baronyshow dot com to go check it out. Uh, I like the uh, the Tara Strong doing all of her vo-, vo work and just you know doing some Twilight. Uh, if you if you watch the Tara Strong introduction Comic Con. 2011, you kind of have to go through a little bit. And she does do the classic Dear Princess Celestia. And I'm like, uh, give me more. Give me get more. Different. Less than that. I'm, I'm not going to lie, though. This this Comic-Con post completely flew under my radar. I didn't even know there was one until now. Oh, burn. I, <clears throat> I watch Equestria Daily like a hawk. But this one passed right through. Uh, it's been happening more and more recently. Kind of weird. 
Oh, no. Need more injection of pony. You know, and, and that, that is kind of the funny part of the two. You guys both are, uh, like, differing news sites, but it's just because Seth doesn't sleep that, uh, you know, he has... <laughs> that that place just goes crazy. Uh, so we got books. We got fanfic suggestions. Uh, we got lots of other craziness that we got in here, but uh, we first need to find out uh, if anybody has any suggestions of what we should read this week. I am going to suggest... You listen to what Chef Sandy says because he took my story and wrote it down. Uh, uh, so instead, I'm again this week going to let, read some fan suggestions and then let him defer to the story that I read, which was really, really good. So first, we're going to go with Steady Hooves. As for fanfic recommendations, I would like to suggest The Centerpiece of My Collection, a sad story about Spike and Rarity that's really well done. Check it out. Fluffy Hoof, our uh, friend who's been on the episode uh, way, way, way back when we started, uh, he wants to suggest Rarity's Rodeo. Uh, the premise is that the equestrian rodeo is coming to town, and Twilight remembers a bet between Applejack and Rarity and Look Before You Sleep, where Rarity said, I'll participate in the next rodeo that comes to town. Uh, warning on that one, it is a little shippy, so... You know, if you are against the shippy using, you might not, might not like that one, but uh, it is a, uh, uh, th- it is a good one. Uh, lots of cl- cleverly written sight gags, training monologue, cheesy show written dialogue, uh, some epic '80s power ba- ballads. So you know, some cool stuff in there. Uh, so you should go check those out. So chef, you took my idea. So tell tell everybody yes. what it was. I beat you to picking past sins. This is what you get when you send the link to the Google Doc and don't put in any of your information first. <laughs> ah. Yes, this week's choice is Past Sins by Penstroke. It's just by Batty Gloom. It is a normal type fic. Um, it has a pretty interesting premise. I'm sure most people have seen it by this point. And the, it even got like a custom header image commissioned for it, which honestly it's like, I looked at it and was like, wow I, I don't like that whole image of Twilight in a noose, that, that concerns me but I kind of got past it and read the first few parts and it's pretty good it's got a 6 star on Equestria Daily's rating system, 1,123 ratings, jeez I, 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 think, I think half the reason people went, wait, 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 why am I reading this, was because they went oh, this is a neat looking picture, oh, I like this, Twilight and a noose, what the you know, I, huh, and read the story to find out what's in it <laughs> I, I do like the there's been a whole bunch of little like fan art stuff like, Nick's in a socks why ponies and socks everywhere i know so uh, uh, yeah the two of us can't recommend that that is a real fun series and god it gets it's updated constantly i can't i can't keep up it's like updated every two days with three new chapters Ugh. Ugh, so much pony derpy what do you got dinky's father revealed by roy g biv it's just an awesome story the first chapter had me thinking you know like thinking about the chapter like couple days after I had read it. And I'm not a big fanfic re- reader, unfortunately. But it's just such an awesome story. And thankfully, it's got at least three chapters. Troy Jabib's is pretty good, too. He's a friend yeah. that hangs out in the IRC, and he's a decent writer, so. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. I've read his stuff before. Um, you know, but I've, I've always really liked it. I've, I've talked to him a few times, and he was like, hey, if you ever want to have, you know, uh, what was the exact word? Um you know, writers who write controversial things, I'll totally be on your show because he's written some quite controversial, uh, well, what some people say is controversial uh, fix. But, yeah, I, I like his stuff. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very well writer. So I, I, I'll agree. I should probably read that at some point and add that to my giant list there, uh, Chef. But, uh, Plaster, what do you got? Uh, this one's kind of old. I don't actually get to read fanfics that much. I actually made my own. It's out there, but I kind of abandoned it, but <clears throat> that's not the point. It might, mine is Sunny Skies All Day Long. I read this one and I felt really good. This one was a good one. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's by Phantom Fox and it's the one where Princess Celestia takes a day off and she goes, which I like the idea, is that when she takes off her crown and stuff like that, she is a uh, uh, pink-haired, white uh, I think it's Pegasus in this picture here. Uh, just a normal pony. Uh, goes by the name of Sunny Skies. 
Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Hmm. I like that. I'm for it. You guys should read it. I I I, I demand. Go read things. <clears throat> it's another one of those Star Six rated stories on H3D too. Yeah, I should check it in. It's only looks like it's only that one piece episode wise. Uh looks like it is loading, 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 loading. Eh, I mean it's a it's a decent little read there. Um still loading. I don't know how many pages, but yeah, it's six star. Looks like it's fun. More about Celestia. Do it. That looks good. Excellent times. Checking out fanfic. Woo. Okay. <laughs> So uh, let's move this train along. Everybody has given our fic, which means we move on to the next segment we have. Every week, I test Chef Sandy with a little bit of Internet knowledge with weird stuff I come across on this uh, this crazy group of people uh, making their pony conquest across the Internet. So this week, we've uh, talked about it just momentarily before with uh, uh, images of, you know, Sock wearing inks, and you know there's sock wearing Luna, and there's I've I've seen Fluttershy in socks, and and everybody, what's up, what's up with the socks? I, so this is one of those that it's another one of those things where a fan said something and people latched onto it like crazy. So Target sells a lot of little one dollar impulse items. They recently added a whole bunch of branded goods, Phineas and Ferb, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, some other stuff. But they also included a bunch of My Little Pony stuff. Stickers, notepads, uh, reminder pads, little buckets, markers, plastic drinking glasses, um, and including tiny little girls' footy socks. And when they're, they're like really small, and they're footy socks. So these are like little kids. I mean, I have a friend of mine, she loves these random weird socks, and they're too small for her feet. But when posted about, somebody was like, actually it was Seth that was saying, oh, these look like they go on hooves. And thus begins the story of ponies and socks. So one guy decided, hey, I'm going to draw Luna wearing Celestia socks. And it was adorable. And then somebody else drew Luna in socks. And then it just kind of blew up. As we were saying in the past since somebody drew the character of that one, the uh, tiny embodiment of Nightmare Moon, Nix, Nix, I don't know, in socks. But there was just recently an entire draw friend post of ponies in socks. Why? Because it's cute and random and weird. Even uh, Edophiliac on uh, DeviantArt, he drew like tiny, tiny, tiny baby Luna in a sock. And then he gave people a blank. So there's Twilight, baby, baby Twilight in a sock. Ooh. And baby Derpy in a sock. Hey, Chef, hold on one second. I'm getting some weird, like, uh, some sort of weird artifacting when you were talking right there. Talk some Ponies and socks are completely adorable. Why? Why? I don't know. Like Princess Celestia and Luna dressed as scanty and knee socks from Panty and Stocking. What? Very cool. And we got our we got our Chef Sandy back. He's no longer attacked by that weird pixelation craziness. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, oh it's still it's still, still kind of there. Keep fighting it. I, I believe in you, Chef Sandy. You can fight this disease where you turn into a robot. I will be the robot pony. Ah, ah! You just keep keep fighting it there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move us on while you deal with your crazy element, which is gonna be hilarious. I, everyone, I need I need images of robot Chef Sandy. This will be great. If you could do it, I would love it. Be amazing. Okay, so moving on, we've got our two uh, two very best friends here, uh, Derby Squad and Plaster. So we want to ask them about how it is running a news site. Uh, maybe even if they've got some fun little news stuff that they've pulled up uh, that we may not be aware of. So uh, this was kind of pulled up. So we kind of did the uh, what is Derpyhooves dot com. I'm actually kind of curious. How fast did you have to jump on that domain name? <laughs> Um, it was pretty early in the fandom, so I was surprised it hadn't been taken when I looked. And yeah, the second I saw it was available, I took it. Very cool. I was I was kind of like, whoa, whoa, Derpy Hooves. All right, that that works. 
Usually I see a whole bunch of that stuff, and the moment that uh, something becomes even moderately Internet popular, it's like, hey, you could buy this site for me for $500. Oh, I hate you. Stupid. <laughs> hate you squatters. Shaking my <laughs> hoof at you. I, I knew as soon as I saw the domain name, actually at derpyhoops.com, I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. Find, we need we need to find what other um, what other domains are out there that have still not been like what does Doctor Hooves go to and what does uh what does some of the other names I wonder what Col- re- I wonder what Col- Colgate Col- goes to huh <laughs> they all redirect to derpyhoops.com. oh sneaky <laughs> sly not yet <laughs> it's like Octavia dot Dag they've got everything they're oh, ahead boy. of us all. They're figuring it out. They're just domain blocking <laughs> Yahoo. How do they do it? I don't understand. <laughs> Somehow they've got put a Trojan on my system. So uh, let's uh, let's move to the next. So you guys obviously run a fan site. You run a blog. Uh, are you insane? I guess is uh, one of the points listed here. But um, when you know when was it founded and why did you guys? Uh, I guess you know um, uh, Derpy's going to probably be the better note on this. But why did you start it up? It just kind of evolved into a news site because I mean it started December seventeenth, and at that point the fandom was just really young. And, I mean, it mainly started up as just announcing contests or just what was going on CO. Um, You know, and, of course, on CO, we always had the link board, which had just a few links to the community, like the wiki and all that fun. You know, and I more or less made it graphical so people on their phones and stuff didn't have to go into CO to actually get to these links. They could just go to Derpy Hoops. The news kind of just evolved after a while. I think probably about a month then. So you you spent a lot of time, you know, I, I'm assuming just from the sound of it, you were probably one of the CO converts that was uh, just kind of probably on CO on the animation board for a while. And then, you know, those first few drops of, hey, there's this show, and it's like, eh, hey, dude, there's this show, and it's kind of crazy. You know, you should probably check it out. Were you were you a part of that first uh, that first infection? Um, I would say no. I would call it the second generation that came in around, say, mid-November to mid-December. It was, I know I can, I found the exact date, which was November 12th. But yeah, it was basically, hey guys, check this show out. You're going to like it, even though it's girly and pink ponies. You know, kind of like a challenge. Mm-hmm. And Plaster, what what about you? How'd you uh, just to kind of uh, give us the origin story here? What about you? How'd how'd you uh, drop into not only the ponies, but how'd you drop into uh, working for a derpy? Uh, well, it's a long story, I guess. I guess do it's it. Not really a long story. I will tell it anyways. Uh, so it was actually Halloween day. I had to work Sunday morning. Halloween was a Saturday last year. Uh, so I was on V, and somebody was doing some missionary work, I guess you could say. And I was bored, and I was like, Dang well, well, yeah, I was bored. <laughs> uh, so they were telling, they, somebody posted about it, and I'm like, well, I watch anime and stuff like that as it is. And so the Moe and cute girls doing cute things thing was no big deal to me. So I checked it out, and I'd say I was hooked right around brunch. When Apple Bloom said, are you going to stay for brunch? I was like, oh, my God. And I uh, stuck around. So that was right about the fourth episode, uh, Apple Buck season. Uh, there was that. And then after a while there, I knew of DerpyHoos.com, obviously, because I hung out in the CO crowd. Um, and then uh, after a while, I, for some reason, this fan base just makes me desire to contribute something. I haven't felt this way about a fan base before, and I hope you feel the same way about me, because call me. Love Uh, him. (laughs) But, like, seriously, I had to contribute something. And so, I mean, I started doing the coloring and stuff like that. You guys can check that out somewhere else. I made videos. I have a fanfic. Uh, But, like, after a while, I was like, well, I kind of want to help out. So I was like, well, I'm going to do something about this. And I contacted Derpy Squad, and I was like, you know what? I want to help you out. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, so, you know, you just take I guess both of you were kind of like a Derpy, it sounds like, was kind of. Um, sounds like, you know, Derpy um, in his way was just kind of wanting to, uh, 
you know, hey, here's this aggregate. You can find stuff, and it just kind of changed. Plaster, you were just wanted to be like, I gotta help, I gotta help, uh, I gotta help. So, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you both had your thing. Uh, I think it was kind of uh, me and Chef, kind of in our own way, was just kind of like, okay, if we don't say something, we're going to explode. So, it, I think, I think um, you're you're pretty much on it. Where this community, it's just like everybody is so super crazy creative that it makes you want to do something. You know. You want mm-hmm. to be part of that singularity that just starts shooting extra energy out and just fueling this whole crazy thing. Yes, that is. It's a it's a good place to be. I feel comfortable here. <laughs> he likes the center of the storm. <laughs> he likes being in the maelstrom. Well, <laughs> so um, here's kind of a fun one. So you can find news. You can find. Uh, I know that one of you guys did a post recently, just kind of running through a target. It looked like and just being like, "Hey, this is what's going on." Um, that there's, was me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is uh, also some information. Uh, there's some really cool stuff. I actually stole one of them for our, for a um, my cool thing this week. Um, so you can find actually other news article postings that I that don't hit EQD, which is uh, you know usually we pimp EQD. QD, but you know, you guys do kind of add some additional stuff, and you got the episodes. That's so cool. Be with any of my friends and just be like, ah, dag, for some reason my hard drive ate it, and I don't have Apple Buck season, but now I do. So, where do you see this uh, this blog, this website going? I think I heard an inkling about a some updates, something coming down the pipe. Where do you, where do you see this all going? We got season two on the horizon. We gotta know. Oh boy, this is this is a big one. So we got to I gotta oh, choose. All right, all right. Let, hold on, let me sit up. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna stand up. What you got? All right. Uh, I'm not sure what Therapy Squad wants me to say, so I'm gonna let him say his piece first. If he's still here. Um, I'm not there? really sure exactly where to go. I mean, we're trying to do news. We've been taking suggestions from people. Plaster's been out talking to people. You know, what you want to hear from the community, news-wise, you know, like pony merchandise. And, yeah, I mean, the update we're talking about is more graphical than anything. We want to make the site look sharper. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, We actually just hired three new writers uh, the other night. It was uh, actually pretty tiring. I stayed up all night building this army. Uh, and it's a tough work building an army, trust me. Uh, so, no, uh, I've got my own personal goals that I won't get into, but uh, uh, Derpy Squad knows them and approves of them. That's all I got to that, – that, that matters. Derpy, look but, out. He says he has an army, and he's looking for conquest. <laughs> he's going well, to we're conquest. definitely getting multiple reporters in there. And they're kind of each doing their own thing. We have, like, Strawberry Spice from EquestriaGaming.com. Um, Great Nightmare from EveryPony.com, and a few other guys who are going, somebody's going to take over the artwork section, which is kind of popular with our site, and just people to keep their eyes peeled for any kind of news going on. Okay, so you got Confederates in there to make sure Plaster isn't going to just upsurp you. Gotcha. All right, cool. So he, he's got his <laughs> armies, but you have your trained spies to keep track on his All right, all right, you're cool. All right. It's just as long as I, neither of you know that you know your plans, that's fine. You know. Yeah, no, I, I, everything I do is for the good of the site. So <laughs> until the tables turn, oh, that's cool. Um, Chef, do you have anything right offhand? Got to make sure I'm not, um, I'm not, you know, destroying you. Move words as usual. Um, Derpy, best pony or best pony infinity plus one? Oh. Hmm, and quite good question. Uh, I don't really... know if I would say best pony. It, she's definitely the best pony for the fandom because everyone sees what they want to see in Derpy. And and, and what's your you know the, we could we could kind of break down into the weirdness of what version of Derpy you know since since we've opened up Pandora's box here let's go ahead and do it you know what what's your what's your favorite form of Derpy there do you like you know your you know, just a little bit silly, goes cross-eyed every once in a while, or do you like your full-on crazy, you don't go full derp derpy? Um, definitely not a fan of the full derp derpy. Roy G. Biv actually does a good job of what I picture of her from basically the beginning. It, it's just, you know, she doesn't speak exactly where you can understand her, but she isn't completely retarded. Mm-hmm. She's not just running yeah, she's around. A good mother. She's not just running right. around screaming muffins all the time. 
Right. She loves muffins, but it's just part of her life. And actually, that story, the Dinky's father revealed, that makes muffins something actually more meaningful. It's basically the nickname of Dinky, or, yeah, Dinky's father. Mm Mm-hmm. That's very cool. All right. Yeah. It, it, as I said, it's, it's interesting to have you both on who are just like, yeah, we love fan characters. And I'm like, I, I like fan characters, too. It's just I, I, I always thought it was, you know, I jumped in after Derpy was kind of brought in to the to the community love nest of just like, oh, she's ours. She's the weird eyes. She's awesome. Just like, oh, that's 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 kind of neat. And then just seeing the be like, no, she, she's actually now part of the show. That's that's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. I, I definitely I remember uh, standing up in shock, going "What?" when I saw Derpy uh, the Pinky Keen episode. I was watching it live, and I, I I do remember getting out of my chair and like putting my hands to my head and screaming. It was awesome. Stood up, flipped the coffee table, stormed out of the room, got a soda. <laughs> <laughs> I remember scrambling to get the news out on the site. That was before me. That was, that was like my time. This post is in all caps, but I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's back when I was flying solo. So that's cool. Um, so that's very great. I'm trying to kind of scrape for anything else much to go off on. So maybe unless you guys have anything else, we could move on to one cool things. Anything? Uh, well, I like. Uh, I really like the. Uh, uh, loving Mother Derby. Uh, there's that uh, one comic, that old kind of sketched comic where uh, Dinky's in school and all the kids are making fun of her, and Derpy's outside oh, going, "My muffin." That's like that's adorable in concentrated form right there. So, it totally is. So everyone has their own Derpy love. You, I, I think, yeah, you you know, there you go. Kick out Applejack, put Derpy in. There you go. New new sixth. You could definitely kick out Rainbow Dash for Derpy here and be all right. <laughs> Same hairstyle. You know what? That that sounds good. Fair trade. All right, moving on before Chef Sandy says anything. Um. <laughs> I'm shaking my fist. You can't see it. You don't have a. Sh- you don't have. I a can fist. feel it. You don't have a fist. Hoof. Shake your hoof. Shake oh, yeah, right, right. Hoofs. Hoofs. Oh, God, I, I'm having a bit of that Lyra moment. She's like, how many fingers am I holding up? And, no, wait. <laughs> or, that cre- or or those cre- that creepy blog, the draw post blog with Apple Bloom, where it's just like, how do you type? And it just turns into fingers. Like, oh, <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> so enormously creepy. So, um Indeed. That that is yes we've uh, we've we've moved that way so let let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up with one cool thing while we're still on a weird tangent there uh, one cool thing we provide you with one hey if you listen to this whole episode and you don't come away with anything just listen to a one just check out our one cool things and uh, maybe you'll enjoy them um, I actually was doing some searching on uh, good old derbyhoos dot com and came across uh, something I thought was really cool a fan and map of Equestria. If you check it out, it's pretty nuts. It's just like, all right, well, there's all right. You click that, and there's Cloudsdale and Canterlot, and it doesn't even like, all right, here's the area where you can find all the dragons, and here's where the zebras are, and there's camels down here, and there's fringe, and it's just like. Jeez, whoa. Yeah, it, I, I would. It, this is something you definitely need to go to the site, definitely need to click on um, and take a look at it because it's massive. It's uh, There's just so much to it. Um, and a lot of it is fan made, so, you know, you may not know anything about uh, the land of Camelus or Zavros or anything like that. But, um, you know, it, it's, it it's a neat content. It, Apparently, uh, somebody, the guy who submitted it said that it was based off of fan fiction. Now, the original link we got was a Tumblr that was taken down for some reason. Like, the whole site was taken down. So, they had to re-upload the picture that was from Ponyburu. Pony Buru. So, yeah, no, that's kind of insight on that. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 pretty nuts. You could just be like, and, and of course, this is this is some interpretation. We we've already had our things of like, wait, why is Manhattan way inland, and it makes more sense that it would kind of be near the coast, so they could have the statue. But you know, as said, yeah, you you can you can have your fun with it and kind of play with this. This is just one interpretation of the world. 
Don't don't let it be the actual your actual interpretation of the world. I just added there. I just checked the site where we had the link. They actually updated the map Ooh. since when we last posted it. Ooh. I just linked it. So they added some Equestria to where Manhattan was supposed to be. So we'll have to update that image on the news post. Ooh, neat. There you go. That works. Okay, that's cool. That's very cool. So we can you can check that out. Ooh, there's even more to it. I like that. I, I am for it. Okay, uh, hey, Chef, what do you have for us this week? All right, my one cool thing is Pony Monopoly, or in this case, Monopony. Uh, uh, <laughs> it is, you know, just in case you wanted to hate your friends forever, just like, any game of Monopoly, except this time it's ponies instead of properties. Now, why you would want to purchase snips or snails, and what exactly, how do you rent derpy? These are questions better asked by, better answered by smarter men than I. That's just one of those, they make Monopoly games of anything. But hey, it, somebody finally made a pony version of it. And uh, I like the go to jail spot is get banished and imprisoned. <laughs> Go to the moon. So, hey, it's uh, My Little Pony Monopoly. Why not? Community wagon. Aren't they still updating that, too? I thought last time I checked, they were getting uh, more community chess cards and stuff like that. Yeah, let's see. Uh, they got more of those. They've swapped Rarity and Applejack. And there's still no moon. Aw. Yeah, you, you you simply need the, the Monopoly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pretty much should end like every single other game of Monopoly. Just somebody says, F forget it, and just, you know, flips the table and walks away. <laughs> Except this time you don't say forget it or, you know, what I was going to say. You just say friendship, and, you know, everybody cheers. Yay, we don't got to play this anymore. We've been playing for 12 hours. Come on. Uh, let's go play Uno. And then another 12-hour game of Uno. Stop trying to win, Chad. Dang it. <laughs> it's actually more difficult to try to not win in Uno than it is to try to win, I guess. Uh, uh, it's, it, it, I've, I've had I've had multiple hour-long sessions of Uno where it's just like they're, they're just waiting for you not to say Uno. They're like, mm, <laughs> Those jerks shake fist. Uh, hoof, game. hoof. Testing your friendship since nineteen something or another. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So moving on. Uh, okay, let's so derpy. What you got? The MLP fanfic video. I wish I had a better title, but um, it's just an epic video. It's a fanfic. It's got no words. I think it's because it's. It's just epic because there's no words being used, and, and I don't know. I'll just say there's no words that really describe it correctly. <laughs> All right, that works. Go check it out. Uh, yeah, whole big fanfic video. I've already got it loaded up, so after show I can just click and go. Blaster, what's this about muffins? Now, I my original original entry was shot down, mostly because, well, first off, I couldn't find it, uh, but... We're not going to get into that. The second one was a different picture of uh, uh, just Pinkie Pie's parents, uh, American Gothic style, the famous painting. But this one is a comic that I actually just found, and uh, I like to keep current with my cool things. So I thought that was adorable, and I needed to share it. Saving muffins for you. There you go. That works. All right, we got our cool things in. We got our topics in. We've got our fan mail, and we've got everything in. Uh, that is the end of a show, it looks like. We have made it to the end. We have come through the other side, and we are all still here. Somehow, Plaster and Derpy have uh, not battled to the death. Battle's still, still here. Taken up. Yeah. They got another 15 minutes, I think. Uh, well, well, it looks like the signal's going to end, so you guys might be able to might be able to sneak away free this time. But only this time. Come back here. It's going to be a real battle to the death. All right. Okay. I'll my fish. Okay. That sounds good. So I want to thank you both. Uh, thank you, Derp, and thank you, Plaster, for showing up and uh, bringing the thunder. Oh yeah. Oh, my pl pleasure. Yep. Yeah, very good thunder. Cool. Yep, and you guys can post us and give us lots of traffic, and we'll give you traffic, too, so people can go over to derpyhooves.com, which is fun to say, hooves. Check that stuff up. Yeah. I uh, always want to thank our uh, 
thank uh, Chef Sandy for uh, being a gracious co-host, and you know, w- even when I run over him with my much talking, I haven't destroyed you yet. Ah, uh, that, that you know, that's that's true. That's true, bro. Love, hoof it. And uh, also want to thank all you great fans who uh, send us emails over at baroniville at gmail dot com. We have a Twitter account. Uh, you should probably go friend me at uh, at uh, Bronyville at Twitter. Um, hey, Chef, what's yours? It's Chef Sandy at Twitter. There you go. It's, I'm very hard to find, obviously. It's, absolutely. It's just terrifying to try and track him down. Um, you can come to our website. That's Brony Show at... Oh, not, not, yeah, it's just bronyshow.com. There's no ad in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Also, we are part of the Google Circles weird Google Plus thing. So if you want to look for Bronyville, uh, you can put in bronyville at gmail.com, and you'll find us in there, too. So you can friend us on that new crazy Google Plusness. And I say that is it for episode, what was this, 14? Yeah, for episode 14, we'll call it that. Yep. So uh, thank you, everyone. We'll be back uh, next week. Another round of ponies, another round of fun. Sleep well, bronies. Adios. Yep.